Que no caiga la fe, que no caiga la esperanza. Que no caiga la fe, que no caiga la esperanza. Que no caiga la fe, mi hermano, que no caiga la fe, mi hermana. Que no caiga la fe, que no caiga la esperanza. That's a Latin American song that says basically, don't let lost our faith and our hope. Let's imagine for a moment that you live in a post-war period. The most significant symbols of your country have been destroyed. Much of the population was killed, raped, or forced into exile. Jeremiah 33 verses from 14 to 16 was written in a similar context. This part of the book of Jeremiah is known also as the book of consolation. But the question is, how to find consolation when all you know and what is valuable to you has been lost or destroyed? At times like those, faith is in crisis. We lost hope and God falls from our souls. The first Sunday of Advent presents another reading that it is Luke 21 verses 25 from, uh, to uh, 36. The apocalyptic language of this narrative surprises us. The text warns us that God's time is coming. And how can we recognize it? Many confusing things will happen. And how can we have faith and hope in times of confusion? Perhaps some of you will agree with me. We are not far away from this situation described in the Gospel of Luke and in Jeremiah's Book of Consolation. According to the Heldenberg Institute for International Conflict Research, currently there are 21 countries at war and 25 countries in low intensity wars. The effects of this conflicts or wars are thousands of deaths, thousands displaced, abuse against the most vulnerable women and children, the destruction of infrastructure in at least 20 countries in the world and many other evils. We might think that we are far away from conflicts of that magnitude. And perhaps we think that in no way those conflicts affect or impact us. I live in Mexico City, Mexico. And Mexico is a country which according to research is immersed in a war. A war in part caused by drug trafficking and corruption. This war is focused in the states of Tamaulipas, Michoacán, and Guerrero. However, affects in one way or another the whole country. The violence, the consequence of armed conflict affect each of our countries. A few days ago, many people in the world cry for the terrorist attack in Paris, just as we mourn the abduction of hundreds of girls in Nigeria by extremist groups. We have seen with anguish civilian flies fall as a consequence of attacks by groups in conflict. We are left speechless as the disappearance of more than 
22,000 people in Mexico over only a short period of time. It is true that the causes of this situation are very complex, but we cannot forget that the profound inequalities in the world that are also violence are likely to be the birthplace of each of these tragedies. Something is terribly wrong in a world where around more than 700 million people do not have enough food to lead a healthy life. That's almost one of every nine people on the earth. Something is very wrong when 400 million people worldwide have not access at all to health services. Something is rooted in the world when the number of people who do not have adequate housing exceeds 1,000 million. And according to United Nations Habitat, millions of people around the world live in dangerous conditions for life and health. If we take a picture of the state of education around the world, we find that even 93 million children do not attend primary school with greater impact on girls. This reality is violence, but usually it does not frighten us that much. We must accept that despite the advances of recent time, the abyss created by lack of access to a full life is still a critical problem that humanity suffers. Before the crisis experienced by the people by his people, the author of Jeremiah's Book of Consolation describes a prophet who does not avoid the fate of his people. But he too is exiled. He goes to jail and from there preaches a God who will not fail in his, her promises. The joy will return to the streets of Jerusalem. It is also true that the prophet says that what it is happening is the expression of God's wrath against the disobedience of an infidel people. Is God motivated by anger? I don't know. I can only assert God's act of love. I can only assert God's continued attempts to reconcile us for including us under her wings as a hand shelters all her chicks. Meanwhile, the author of Luke called his listeners to be ready, prepare, inviting them to read the signs of the, of the times. The Son of Man shall come in all his glory. For so long, community of believers in different historical moments tried to know when parousia will come, when the return of the Lord will happen. Perhaps this title, this name, Man's Daughter, Son of Man is for every person that, like Jesus, is committed to the promise of God's good news to the poor, freedom to the oppressed, health to outcast. Maybe man's daughter and son's man are those committed with God's time when son again will son in the streets of our cities. In this season of Advent, we are called to have faith and hope 
even amid the violence of our world, amid the confusion of our life, God still calling sons of women, daughters of men. Little Messiahs who are saving our world. People like Dr. Jean Witters, who is dressed as a homeless person to provide medicine and medical care to southern abrupt sleepers in the dark streets of Pittsburgh. Or perhaps as Nareen Shamu, a 20 years old Iraqi woman dedicated to save women from the Yazidi ethnic minority to be enslaved by the Islamic State of Iraq. Nareen has rescued at least 700 women that were raped, forced to convert to Islam, and sold as slaves. Or maybe like Lorena Scarponi, a Brazilian woman founder of Believe It, who had changed the concept that to have services or training money is required, giving priority to the exchange as a way to beat ferocious capitalism. Or like Shad Burstein from Guitars Over Guns, an American musician who used music as a way to take young people at risk of violence from the streets in Florida. God continue calling sons and daughters of goodwill in the world so that we can again sing, so that we don't forget that nothing and no one can take away our hope. Que no caiga la fe, que no caiga la esperanza.